What's up, my pilots? Angry Poncho here, and we're back playing Morrowind. Turn the brightness up. Hopefully, you guys can see. It's Boy, still. Well, you guys can see now, it's still the middle of the night, but, yeah, now. So, uh, I've heard there's actually a few things for us to do right around here in Saitanine. But in order to get access to them... Oops, that's not the button I want. That's the one I want. I'm gonna run around in third-person mode for a bit in this episode. Just for funsies, why not? Yeah. So I want to run out here to that little, uh, ancestral tomb that we spotted in the last episode. Can't, uh wait here. So, I sort of... I went through some stuff pretty quickly last time around and didn't really get into much detail about very much. I sort of just ran around and did stuff. But from now on I'm going to try to explain things a little bit more because I know some people are watching who have never played Morrowind and, oh man, are you missing out. So it's just one of the games of my childhood. Get her out of here! My mouse input's a little bit weird. If I stand here and I click the mouse really quickly, it actually... My character holds his sword back like I'm like I'm holding the button down. I don't think that the, uh... The game is reading the, the rate at which I'm clicking very well. That's alright, though. Ooh, resistant magicka. Nice. Get out of here! Just keep swinging. I'll hit the one that's gonna try and stun you. There you go. So look in the bottom left corner and you'll see four four bars. That yellow bar that's swiftly decreasing is the health of my opponent. The red bar is my health. Blue bar is my my magicka, which is my basically measures your ability to cast spells, and when it runs out you can't cast anymore. And then the uh, green bar at the bottom is your fatigue. What the What is this? What the hell's going on? It's Processus Vitellius! Your journal's been updated. Look at this, he's got pants, a tax record, and 200 gold. I guess I'll dispose of him. <laughs> you cannot remove this corpse. Okay, let's see what our journal says. I found a corpse while traveling near Sidonim. It seems to be the corpse of one Processus Vitellius. Vitellius, based on some items. He's carrying a parchment that looks like a tax record. 200 gold, probably taxes he's collected. Let's read it. Hmm. Yeah, sure enough, he's got the tax record for the whole town here, and who's paid and who hasn't. Hmm. Interesting. Alright, well damn. That's a little bit, uh... A little bit sort of bad news for him, isn't it? Those frogs are loud. Man. Oh, look at the town from afar. So beautiful. So, I really don't, I don't know where to start explaining things. I guess I'll just sort of explain things as we go along, because there's some... Oh, you can only rest on solid ground. Yeah, I'm trying to rest, because when you rest, Hill you can... Emma. Oh, God! Get out of here. All right, so here's what's happening. Um, being attacked... Uh, so basically, when you sleep out here in the wilderness, you, you run the risk of waking up and getting your shit rocked by somebody who decided to ruin your day. And this guy has decided to be that guy. So... He's gonna get what's coming to him with my fire spells. I can tell from his voice that he's a Dunmer, which means he's resisting the fire, but I don't have any other elements yet, so... It will have to suffice. His name is Assassin. Let's see what he's got. Silver dagger... and armor. Dark Brotherhood! Wow, this is good armor, too. I'll take all that. Dispose of the Assassin. Well, would you check that out? Armor rating 35. That's actually really good light armor. So you see right now our armor rating is 0. Let's throw this stuff on. Where did I take my shield off? Whoops. That's my pants again. So this is how you equip things. You click on them and put them onto your body. Silver dagger. That's alright. I've got a, a short sword. That's everything, right? Check underneath. Yeah, look at that armor set. Nice, and we got 32 armor points now. Awesome. Our armor points detract from the damage we take whenever uh, someone successfully hits us with something. So it basically helps keep us alive. And so, yeah, what I was attempting to do was uh, get a little bit of rest, 
which heals your character and restores your... Actually, all three of those bars down there will fill up if you actually sleep and you rest out in the wilderness or somewhere. But uh, what I was really interested in was refilling my health, which is why I was doing it. And then, of course, it sort of sucks because when you sleep out in the wilderness, you never know what you're going to get. Life is like a box of chocolates, they say. I can't seem to search this cliff racer. I think it's because he fell inside the rock. But, uh, you know, you can only rest on solid ground, you can't rest while jumping, and your rest can be, and frequently is, interrupted. Which basically means something came up to you while you were sleeping and decided that they wanted to attack you and take advantage of you being asleep. Now, thankfully, most of the time when this happens, you don't, you don't really lose much, uh, because your only thing you lose is the element of surprise. They're coming up on you and you don't have time to prepare your spells or whatever else you might need to do in order to get prepped, and you certainly can't get a sneak attack on them, because they found you first. Yeah, this is much brighter. I hope you guys can see it better now. All, all I did was turn the gamma up in the menus, so... Hopefully it still looks like a... The picture still looks good, but it's nice and bright so you can see it. And the dynamic lighting still looks good, so I'm pleased with the result here. Alright. Ooh, we got two of them. I use my spells. But I want to get busy fighting one and then get sucked in by the other. I'm going to try and mix it up with my uh, use of magic and my sword so that my, d my Dark Elf stays a, a varied character because you get bonuses depending on which race you decide to play as. And I decided to play as a Dark Elf, a Dunmer, because they are the natives in this region and it's the race I always played as a kid. It's my favorite by far. Ooh, we got two dudes. I'm going to try and get one of them to come up here and close the door behind him. Be smart about this. He didn't come through the doorway, so I'm going to just kill him here. And then we got this dude. What is he doing? Alright, let me see. I don't have any healing spells, do I? Man. Hmm. I, can, oh, I can't cast Ancestor Guardian again, again, can I? Okay. Yes, that's another thing, is that these magic spells over here, the ones that say spells, are determined by how much magicka you have left, whether or not you can use them. And here you have the the cost to cast it, which is the number of points of magicka, and then slash the chance of it successfully casting. So if you played future uh, Elder Scrolls games, you whoa, hello. You're used to the chance to... Did I just... What am I even opening here? You're used to the chance to cast being 100, uh, where basically whenever you cast a spell, it always works. That is not the case for Morrowind. If you, uh, if you cast a spell that's at a level that you're not capable of yet, the odds of you casting it go way down. And if it's a really powerful spell, the effect is even more noticeable. So at a low level, it can be very difficult to, to cast really powerful spells. Which makes sense, right? But it's pretty easy to cast easy spells. Ooh, a scroll of divine intervention. I'll explain that in a minute. So you see Firebite, the little fireball touched. Just not, not actually a fireball, it's a spell that only operates when you touch them. It's got a 100% chance of casting it. Now, part of this is determined by your skill in whatever class of magic it is. So, since this is in the school of destruction magic, and my destruction skill is at 46, which is almost halfway to 100, which is the max, uh, effectively the max, uh, it's actually it's got a great chance to cast. So, you see the shield spell I have, which just puts a little bit of a shield on you for a while, is in the school of alteration. My alteration skill is only 35. So I get an 84% chance to cast that correctly, or to cast, it, to cast it each time I attempt it. So it's still pretty good, actually, uh, because 35 is a decent skill in a magical uh, discipline, So especially for a level 1 character. Okay, where's my lockpicks? Let's try and open this stuff up. There we go. Let's see what we got. Just a normal ring. It's not worth much at all. Honestly, it's probably not worth the value of lockpick that I lost. Oh well. There's another one. Ah, empty! What a letdown. Nothing else going on in here. It's a fair bunch of creepy whispering. It's not me, man. It's actually in the game. Alright, where's my short sword? You must finish your attack. Yes, thank you. Take my sword back out. Alright, so that looks like that's it for this tomb here. Just figured I'd step in and get the goodies. Uh, the best thing we picked up in this tomb was that... Scroll of Divine Intervention. So... Oh, it got dark already. Oh yeah, because I slept for a while, didn't I? Anyway, let's pick up some mushrooms on the way back. Uh, 
it's, well, it's really bright underwater. That seems a little bit strange for nighttime. Maybe it's the moonlight. Ow! And the weird thing is, even though I'm fighting a fish, I could easily be using my fire spell if I wanted. There's no restrictions to that. Get over here. <laughs> Come back up for air. Where'd he go? Bastard slaughterfish. Such annoying. I think he's, he's flipping out, dude. He's freaking. Gotcha. So I'll take his scales, because they're an alchemical ingredient. Let's swim over here. My character's not a very fast swimmer right now, so... It's a little bit slow. Let's come over here and blast a mud crab. These are your level 1 enemies. They're really not even a threat. Ah, oh, yeah, so there's so much to talk about. The reason I'm collecting all these mushrooms and all these ingredients is because... We've got alchemy as one of our skills, and the best way to improve in that is to to make things. This looks like Nernroot, doesn't it? I keep, every time I see it, I think it's Nernroot. Oh, I'm lost. The fog is rolled in. That's not the fog distance, that's just the fact that it's foggy tonight. So thankfully we have a map, so I know Satanine is to the east. So that's this way. I wouldn't have guessed that. <laughs> that's good. You can use what you've got. See if we'll see it in the distance here, hopefully. It'll, it'll come out from the fog. There's some intense music playing right now. Oh, look at this! Look what we got here underneath the water. I think we got some clams. Oh, we got another slaughterfish. I'll use my magic on this one. He's a bigger one. Oh, you failed casting the spell! That sucks. I'm really tired. That's what's doing it. I need to get out of this water. These guys are gonna double team me. Oh boy, yeah, here they go. <laughs> I saw this coming. Run! Run! They can't hit you on land, can they? <laughs> oh god, there's four of them. No wonder I was getting my ass handed to me. So, I can't. Yeah, I can sleep. They can't reach me. <laughs> the rest has been interrupted. Oh, by a rat! Get out of here! The rats have a surprising highly high amount of health, actually. Even compared to the mud crabs, they're way more dangerous, but not even to a level 1 character. As long as you pick a decent attacking skill as one of your majors, you'll be fine. Alright, come here, you. Yeah, one fireball. It's definitely my best attack right now. So, I think we have some clams down here. Certainly see rocks. Ow! Well, would you stop? Oh, I missed. Boom! Gotcha. Where's your buddy? So you have to get the cursor right on him in order for it to hit him. Get... Oops, I'm drowning. Let's get some air. Get out of here. Now, the cool thing about the way your skills increase is they, they increase with use. So, it's not like, uh... Like Fallout, where when you go to when you increase in level, you you just get to pick which skills you want to improve. Uh, this is like Elder other Elder Scrolls games, where the skills you use are the ones that you get better at. And so, if you want to be a master swordsman, the only way you're going to accomplish that is by herg getting eaten by another slaughterfish, aren't I? Gosh, you guys are really annoying me today. There we go. Oh, he's got he's he's taking two. He's a tough fish. Come here, you. Get some air. Finish him off with my sword. Gotcha. Once they go belly up, you know they're done. Okay, we were headed this way. So yeah, using these destruction spells and our sword all the time is going to make us master those skills with, with relative ease. And they're actually going to go up even faster than our other skills. So if you look here in the menu, we've got major skills, and we've got minor skills, and we've got miscellaneous. Miscellaneous skills, basically that means you're never going to use those. You, you don't want to be good at that, because uh, they're not going to be easy for you to raise. They take extra uses in order for them, to, for, them to, for them to increase. Then you have minor skills, which are sort of your normal skills. These are skills you use, but not a whole lot. They're useful, but not all the time. It's kind of like that, so that's why we have armor and block and illusion down here. And then our major skills are the ones that we're going to really use all the time. So these are my, fi my five top skills here. And they are gonna actually they actually get a bonus to their increase rate, so they they increase more quickly than your other skills when you choose them to be major. So it's pretty awesome. Man, I'm not gathering anything useful. That's lame. Now we've reached Satanin again. This is the lighthouse outside. If you look in the stump out here by the lighthouse, we have some loot. Not a whole lot of goodies, but just a bit. 
And I think... Where is it that the other stump is? Is it over... Oh, I remember now. It's on the other side. Okay. Take that. See, sometimes when I'm picking up one of those mushrooms, it actually counts as more than one, because it's like I've... The mushroom was big enough that I got two portions of it or something like that. So let's, let's run up to the top of the lighthouse real quick here. I want to uh, show you guys something else. Oh man, the frame rate is great. Favier Vedrano. Cool. How you doing? Greetings, fellow Dunmer. Let's look at the goodies she's got up here. She's got the Wraith's Wedding Dowry. So this is our first opportunity to show off stealing things. We hit the control key. You see the bottom left corner where that little hand with the bag icon appears? Uh, that means that we're not detected, so we need to steal whatever the hell we want. I'm going to step back outside. We're done in there now. Where is that stump I'm looking for? There it is. So we're going to jump down to this rock right here. Try not to get killed by the fall. This can be a little bit... Is that the right stump? I think that's the right stump. Anyway, this fall shouldn't be too bad. Ow! <laughs> I got stunned. Okay. Either way, we're up here on top of the rocks. I don't know if you have to do this from the lighthouse, but that's how I always seem to do it. There we go. Down here in this stump is an iron shard axe. This casts frost damage, so if you're actually an axe-wielding character, that would be a great starting weapon for you. Since it says it's, because since it's enchanted, you can affect ghosts with it, uh, whereas normal weapons will just go right through. Why don't we, wait, why don't we wait for a little bit here? So the sun will come back up. There we go. It's all foggy and dreary in St. Anine today. Alright, so we found the body of that, uh, what's-his-face guy. Actually, there's a few reasons we should talk to the guard. Come here, guard. We got attacked by an assassin! You say you've been attacked by an assassin? Yeah, I just said that. From your description, it sounds like the work of the Dark Brotherhood. Yeah, that's what, that's what the armor was called. I'm not sure who you angered, but stay away from me. <laughs> you ass! Alright, so he tells us to talk to some guy in Ebonheart about it. Alright, I guess we'll do that eventually. Not anytime soon, that's for sure. Let's go back into the census and excise office. I'm going to report the uh, the body I found to the, the head of the excise office. That makes sense, right? Since he would be in charge of the tax records, right? They haven't even opened the door yet. Have you guys just been in here for days? What's All right. this, then? Where'd your friend go? Hmm. Da -da 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 -da. Jeez, does that, does that girl even know how to write? She didn't even put a proper title on this book. It's weird. With an outfit like that, you must be doing very well for yourself. Hey, I stole this armor. I mean, took it from someone that was already dead. The murder of Processus Vitellus. Murdered? What a waste. Processus was a good man. I've been wondering why we hadn't heard from him in a few days. Still, these are dangerous times we live in, and these sorts of things will happen. Did you happen to find any tax money he'd collected? I'd hate to be so callous, but I do have a job to do. Uh, I guess I'll be honest and tell him I found the money. You did? How odd that he was murdered but not robbed. Your honesty is appreciated, I can tell you that. I won't forget this, Pancho. In fact, if you're looking for some money for yourself, I'd like to see the murderer processes punished. Killing an emperor's tax officer is punishable by death. Is, is killing someone else not? Anyway, find his murderer, bring him to justice, and the census and excise office will pay you 500 septums. Sweet. Thanks, man. I guess we're friends now? Are we buddies? Okay, cool. I'm just going to shut the door behind me again. <laughs> Where'd all this stuff go? I never looted these, did I? I can't believe I, I, can't believe I forgot to do that. I, I can't believe no one left a comment telling me to do it either. Crazy. Any time now. Hey, I'm done with you. Thank you. Alright, so now we got to figure out who doesn't like the tax man. Fargoth, can you tell me anything about Processus Vitellius? Someone finally got him, huh? Well, it's no surprise, I suppose. No one likes a tax collector, especially one who flaunts his wealth. The only one who could stomach him at all was Thaver over in the lighthouse. The two of them spent them some time together. Shame, this really. A wondrous encounter. Welcome. I love you too, Fargoth. Huh, so that lady in the lighthouse that we just walked right past and whose book we stole apparently was friends, or perhaps even romantically involved with the tax man. I wonder if she heard about his death yet. Who is sniffling? That was loud. He's far away. I still heard him. I suppose we should inform her. Hello, Faver. I'm Faver Vedrano. Welcome to Scenic Satanine, Gateway to Morrowind. Are you looking for someone in particular? Have you heard about Processus? 
Murdered! No! Tell me it's not so! He was the gentlest man I've ever met. Okay. He and I have become so close in the past few months. I don't know what I would do without him. I've only ever seen him get angry once or twice. I never raised a hand to anyone. This is so sad. Oh, so you're telling me he wasn't asking for it? Who did he get angry at? Well, not even angry, I suppose. I saw him arguing once with Foreign Gilneth. Hmm. Where can I find Foreign Gilneth? Anyway, please find out what happened. And if you find what became a processus's ring, it will ease my heart. Huh. Okay. Interesting. I wonder where this foreign guy lives. I assume he lives somewhere here in Saitanin. Use our map again for this. Check the houses. There it is. Yep, straight over, over here. Cool. Hey, we're getting some serious creepy, like, wind noise today. I wish that would stop. That's seriously creeping me out. I mean, I know Satanine is in just a nasty, swampy part of Morrowind, but damn, that is seriously creepy. What did we just walk? Anyway, here's Foran's... Foran Gilneth's shack. You! Explain your actions. Nice face paint. What do you want? Did you murder Processus Vitilius? That fetcher! You damn right I did him in, and a good thing, too. He was skimming a load of money from all us honest people, overcharging us on our taxes and keeping the difference. So I killed the bastard and left his body out there to rot, and all his ill-begotten gold still on him. Damn. Seriously? That's crazy, man. That's no excuse for murder, though. Prepare to be defeated! Die! Ooh, he didn't take that very well, did he? My fire spells are useless. Actually, they, they do a little bit of damage. Let's try the sword instead. Bow! Now, one of the tricks you have to deal with with uh, Morrowind is that your fatigue determines a lot of your effectiveness. Did he just use his Ancestor Guardian? Oh, that sucks. That's gonna make him harder to hit. It's like what's, we're, working, we're working down his health here, though. So basically, your green bar down there determines your effectiveness at whatever you're doing. So if it gets too low, it means you're all worn out, and you're gonna miss with your sword a lot, and you're not gonna be able to cast your spells as effectively. You're going to fail a lot more often, basically. Boom! Gotcha. Now we need the evidence. Yeah, there's Atelius' ring. And all his other possessions. <laughs> Shut your damn mouth, fool. What else have we got here? Uh, a dance in the fire! Mercantile skill increased. Well, as long as he's dead, we might as well steal all of his possessions. That's the logical thing to do, right? Uh, why not? I'm a real pack rat in Morrowind. I pick up everything. It's ridiculous. I'll take this, and that jug, and that jug. Contents of this barrel. Close. Contents of this barrel. Nothing. Can I sleep in the hammock? Yeah! Until healed. Whew! That was a nice nap after all my crime fighting. Ah. <sighs> All right, well, we've, um, successfully solved the murder mystery. I guess we should go tell, uh, <laughs> Sosalius Er... or whatever his name was, Mr. Ergala, about our findings so we can get our just rewards. <laughs> Heartfelt rewards! Yes, friend. <laughs> oh, we are buddies now. I've solved the murder! I heard you've been asking around. Glad to see this matter is brought to completion. Here's your reward. Good to see there are still some citizens who understand their loyalty to the Emperor. I take orders directly from the Emperor, actually. Or at least I have some packages from him. Five hundred gold! Very nice. Ah, and so we venture back out into the night quite a bit richer. What's this about? That five hundred gold is a great place to start off when you're doing a new character. I recommend that quest every time you start a new game. It's just a good, just a good launching point for the rest of the game. It's going to allow us to buy some useful Let's... things in a couple of uh, videos. So we've done fairly well for ourselves this time around, I think. We've uh, picked up a better armor set. Man, it's really bright inside buildings. Hopefully that's not too bad. I know YouTube darkens the videos quite a bit, so... That won't really be a problem, I don't think. Let's barter, shall we? Got yeah, so much junk, it doesn't even all fit on the screen here. I guess I can make... I can make his barter window a little bit smaller. I mean, I really, I could, I could... I could go ridiculous and just fill the whole screen. But you see, what that does is that makes... It actually gives me less room, because my picture starts to get so large. The best thing you could do would be to make it a square, I think. So, something like that. There we go. Just do like this, shall we? Yeah, 
There we go. That works. All right. So, what are we, what are we gonna sell now? Sell that axe. Sell that tanto. Sell that dagger. Sell that shield. <laughs> Save that whale. Save those snails. Ah, uh, Processus Vitellius's ring. We could return this to his his lover, but I think we're gonna get a lot more out of it if we just sell it. <laughs> Sorry. So you can see down here, you can see how much gold we have and how much gold our merchant friend has. We're not going to be able to get any more out of him than what he's got, so... I don't want to sell any of the ingredients, because I want to use those to make potions. We, we don't have our goodies yet for that, so that's why I haven't made any. Well, oops, I just sold him all my gold. <laughs> that's not going to... It's not going to get me ahead, is it? Wooden knife, wooden spoon. What else have we got? Scroll of Hellfire? Fire damage is 10 to 100 points for 10 feet on target. That would be nasty, man. Whew. I don't know if I even want to carry that around. I mean, it would be useful, I guess, so maybe I should keep it. It's certainly not very heavy, so... I'll sell that book. So I should explain, actually, how uh, thievery and such work in this game. Uh, people won't notice when stuff is stolen, so it's not like in uh, future games where you have to find a fence in order to sell stolen items. Uh, all you really... all you have to do is just sell it to somebody that you didn't steal it from. That's the only way you can get caught, is if you sell it to someone... is if you, if you sell it to the actual person that you stole it from. And you'd have to be pretty dumb to do that. I need to buy some armor or hammers, so I'm just gonna... Damn, those are expensive! Are you serious? He charged me 200 for the seven of those. Alright, well, I don't want all of them, then. I'll just take two. That'll be enough for now, I guess. Try and squeeze some more money out of him. There we go. Sometimes you can just try a few you times and my interest. they'll Please give you they'll give you the box. deal. Check out this, this is one of the mods. Puts the little fireplaces in all the buildings. Just cool as. Alright, so there's a couple more things I'd like to do in Sedanin, but I think those adventures are gonna have to wait Let's for the next episode. So let me just say, this game is remarkably long, and I've, I, I do want to do a few different characters, at least, just to show off different playstyles. Uh, but this, this character that we're on here is going to be the primary. He's going to be our Mr. Badass. So, we're going to be spending a lot of time with him. And hopefully, uh, we'll be able to do basically all of the quest, different quest lines that are available. Uh, not with this character, but with at least one of them. So, it's going to be a little bit... A little bit touch and go sometimes, I think, but I think the end result will be wonderful because we'll be able to see basically every aspect of this enormous game, and it's going to take quite a number of videos. So, uh, thanks for your continued enthusiasm in the LP, and thanks for watching. I will see you guys in the next episode. Look at this night. Look at this. The water reflects the night sky. Isn't that just? Isn't that just pretty? It's like a painting, man.